Xander Lynch is starting. Hey internet, I'm Steve the Cosmere Knot, and this is Raffo. Here's part four of Rhythm of War. To understand all the lore, you've got to read more. There are spoilers for sure. I can't wait anymore, let's go! We get the second page from Nas's infiltration into the Cartographer's Guild. Apparently Nas ran into Isaac Stewart's other in-universe counterpart, Isasik Shulin. He breaks down the different phonemes in the glyph for Roshar, distinguishing phonemes for Stormlight, Lifelight, and Voidlight. With references to Tan of Ast, Coravellium of Ast, She Who Brings the Dews at Dawn, and Race. Also, that full glyph has dots at all the different spots of the Knight's Radiant Orders in this diagram. Now I just want answers on Nas's smuggling artifacts and covertly collecting strange weapons. The Everstorm had been building in Shadesmar for centuries. Voidspren gathered at the far end of Braze's sub-astral, and could only be taken the rest of the way in gemstones. Ba Otto Mishram gave forms of power, connected herself to the entire Singer species. Venleys had experience cramming two Spren into her gem heart. Ulim first, now Tambor. I'll come off it. Come on. The epigraphs from this part are excerpts from Kalak's journal. Lots of good stuff about the Oath Pact. Weather in Shadesmar has nothing to do with weather. But Spren and Shadesmar itself are created by sapient thought. So does the weather reflect some sort of prevailing mindset among humans that day? A crystalline day is characterized by increased growth in the plants, as well as a pink moss-like crystal growth. Is that a manifestation of rosite? Maybe it actually does predate Adenalsium. What causes the surges and quasi-tidal movements of the beads in Shadesmar? The population of lasting integrity includes a group of traders from Nalthus. There's a clan of horn eaters that live in Shadesmar. Ending of Lost Metal, anyone? Pattern says he and Shallan first met on the Wind's Pleasure, before she jumped in to see the Sanfid. Sixteen is a world hopper from Scadriel who apparently doesn't need to eat, drink, or poop, and that's all the information we have. He's also completely bald. A Chandra? Raboniel's grandmother was there when humanity first arrived on Roshar, covered in soot and ash. Soot and ashen? She tells Navani that the different lights have not only tones, but rhythms too. I have heard, Raboniel said, that the lights respond to sound because it is reminiscent of the voice of the shards commanding them to obey. Similar to the creation story of Middle-earth, Raboniel theorizes that some opposite was used to destroy honor, somehow forcing honor to act dishonorably? Gera chased Axendweth away. Tension between the Ferrochemists! Ulim sees Shalash, Kalak, and Nail at the Kolinar Palace the night of Gavilar's assassination. How can Nail see him? Nail has been tracking Zeth. He's the one that tells Venli about Gavilar's intent to break the treaty and Zeth's skills. Wit helped Pattern get a key to Shallan's trunk. He has a cell phone too. I wonder if it's the Skaze he's talking to at the end of Elantris. Azure was in lasting integrity, but she left five months ago. Kaladin is dreaming in a vision from Odium of another planet with hardly any atmosphere, transporting his cognitive aspect to Ashen, Braze. There's occasionally Shadesmar-esque omnipresent light. Hoyd mentions electric and gaseous lights. Incandescent and fluorescent? Design is here, with an imaginary Hoyd's flute. Hoyd light weaves a dog and a pearlescent dragon. Is it actually frost? This is the first time we've seen a dragon in dragon form on screen, and it actually mentions dragon steel, silver running along the contours of its body. Hoyd says there's only one in residence on Roshar, which would be Coravellium of Ast aka Cultivation. Design is a delight. Finally, someone to torment Hoyd as much as he deserves. The mountain of Urethiru is called Ur, as in of the Chaldees, which means original in the Dawn chant. The phrase, if these walls could talk, is being answered literally in this chapter. Listeners mature swiftly. By age 10, Venli was considered an adult. How long is the typical listener lifespan? Odium has invested in Roshar, his rhythm becoming as natural as honors or cultivations. His power was natural, and no more wrong or right than any other part of nature. There's no real bad guy in the Cosmere. The only evil is in imbalance. Venli hears the tones of Odium and cultivation harmonize in her mind. What's that called? The rhythm of scheming? 
She remembers Eshenai's death during the Battle of Narek. Narak. Another Navani notebook sketch, but this time it's an argument between Navani and Raboniel about the Soul Sucker Dagger, which actually gets experimented with in the next chapter. The Investiture Conductive Metal is Racium, Odium's God Metal. In the epigraphs of chapter 84, Kalak mentions Midius using Investiture to enhance his mind. Maybe like storing memories in breath? Navani experiments with Racium and a corrupted flame spren again citing that Way of Kings interlude with the Ardents. She transfers half a spren into a larger gemstone, effectively downshifting. Raboniel tells her about Taldane White Sand. Dabid. Lyft is able to open the Dun door because she creates light. Healing Cal was harder than healing Gox, who was actively dying, fighting against other investiture. Interesting. Venley says the new storm building in Shadesmar is blocking the way to Braze? Yeah. Stormspren existed before, but not the Everstorm, because Odium would grant Stormform directly to Regals. How did Gavilar get all the different lights? According to Amuna, caretaker of the Deadeyes in Lasting Integrity, there were originally some 2,000 Windrunners before the Recreants, a little over 300 now. Reference to The Duel. White Spine Unchained, baby! Kellex eating an apple, which must have come from off-world. Honor is not dead so long as he lives in the hearts of men. Thanks, Notum. Adolin tells Kellex that Taln didn't break. Shallan fakes her way into the Honor Spren Stormlight Vault. Most of its Stormlight is stored in a big vat purchased from the Eyrie. They're getting around. Looks like the same technique for storing purified door. And now we know why perfect gemstones are so uncommon on Roshar. They've all been collected in Shadesmar over thousands of years. There's your answer, Yasna. The night Venli captures a storm spren, Eshenai is granted a light spren by a freaking chasm fiend! There's definitely something more going on there. She does almost say the Windrunner second ideal. Navani's using white sand in her experiments. Raboniel can't visit Taldane because she's bound to Braze. Is that the only reason? Heavenly Ones tried interplanetary travel. It, it didn't work. Navani briefly surmises on the utility of electricity. Current doesn't cause investiture to change, uh, polarity. Navani's instinctually learning the rhythms. Raboniel is unmaking the sibling. That's a very specific word. She gives Navani the title Voice of Lights. Harmony could be reached, but it was exceedingly difficult. Harmony, eh? Six of the ten final honor spren created by the Stormfather are at the trial. Basically the granddaddies of every honor spren since. The honor spren accused Dalinar of nearly killing the Stormfather when he physically summoned him to work an Oathgate in Oathbringer. Side note, I enjoy the procedural drama of the courtroom scenes, but it feels like they're so short with very little skipped over or summarized. Each trial session would last like ten minutes max. Enter... Formless. Teft talks about the Envisagers, yet another secret organization that got his parents killed. To become Radiant, it sounds like they were trying to snap, like on Scadriel. Shallan remembers summoning her blade the first time, killing her mother, with stark red hair and beautiful green eyes. And then she remembers everything. Her veil is no longer needed. She tells Kellek she was sent by the Ghostbloods. Old Thydekar has always wanted my secrets. I was there when Ba'ado Mishram was captured. I know the truth of the Radiance, the Recreants, and the Nahel Spren. Huh? He later goes on to call for the release of Ba'ado Mishram, which I think will likely happen near the end of the next book. That ties directly with what's going on with Maya and Adolin. He sends her some of his strength. A bond has to go both ways, and WE CHOSE! The Radiants didn't know their spren would die, but it was an acceptable possibility. I'm terrified for Stormlight 5. Venli flashback to the end of Words of Radiance. She gets spared by a spearman, passes Sherblood's body, and sees Adolin fight with Eshenai. Eventually, she finds refuge in the building Adolin cut through, which means she's right here. Navani is Sheldon Cooper. 
I don't need sleep. I need answers. She gets to the point where she can draw out void light with a touch, like the fused. And the singing of the anti-void light tone requires intent. She has to know and want to do it. Raboniel tells her about axons, what we call atoms, the little balls of matter that make up everything. Liars. Anti-void light destroys fused souls, stopping future returns. Raboniel will create anti-stormlight to destroy Radiant Spren. Final batch of interludes! The first is from Hesina, Cal's mom. Liren might have made an oblique reference to Threnodite Shades? Or just general ghosts. We finally get insight to Liren's character. He blames himself for Tien's death. Then Aiden, who claims that he'll be a Windrunner one day. I fully expect him to be a main character in the second arc of Stormlight. And then Teravangian, getting dumber and dumber. He surmises that a good portion of intelligence comes from speed and the ability to memorize. Zinc and copper ferrochemy would be useful. Would he be able to utilize those to sort of equalize his intelligence? Teravangian had agents interview one of the former bearers of Nightblood. Who? We don't know where it went after Vasher parted with it. Sya'anat confirms that he met cultivation. He repeats his request for the capacity to stop what was coming. She says race has different goals than his shard. Interesting. Oh, Teravangian. Big things in store for him next week when we finally get to part five. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you don't miss my videos. If you want to dive into the last part of Rhythm of War right now, go to patreon.com slash thecosmereknot and join Doug, Matt, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, and all the rest of these lovely people who got to see all these videos weeks ago. There's also a bunch more fun perks, including fancy colors on my Discord server. Come read and find out! Ponytail. <laughs> I'm thirsty. <laughs> So many burps.